As a scout master and somebody who's been involved with the Boy Scouts for most of my life, I've done my fair share of backpacking. And one of the top questions so many people seem to have about backpacking is what is the ideal pack weight and how much weight should you, should you expect to carry in a backpack? We're going to talk about that. I'm going to share my own sort of backpacking disaster story with you in this video. And we're going to take a look at a brand new backpack from the folks at Scandinavian Gear. That's all coming up next here on Survival on Purpose. Welcome back to Survival on Purpose, your home for information and gear reviews related to camping, survival, and general preparedness for regular folks. My name's Brian. Thanks for joining me. So, I'm going to kind of do a blended video this time, kind of a three-part deal. Uh, we're going to talk about backpacking weight because that is a very, very, very highly searched question because a lot of people just want to know, people that haven't been backpacking much or maybe they went, they had a, went backpacking, had a bad experience. Um, whatever the case may be, that's a really important question to ask if you're considering going backpacking. And as we go through this video, I'm going to share my own little disaster story about why that's become so important to me. And we're going to take a look at this backpack here, which is a 65 liter backpack from the folks at Scandinavian Gear. Full disclosure, they sent me this so I could show it to you. And if you happen to like this and you happen to buy one, I'll get a little commission off the sale so that'll help support the channel financially. Just wanna be straight up front with you about that. So what I thought we'd do, I've, I've actually carried this now on two different campouts. I took it on a backpacking campout. We got pour down rain on, so it's a pretty good test of, of, the, of the gear. And it's kind of a regular weekend campout to use it for my, to, to carry my gear from the truck to my hammock, really, not a big deal. So anyway, I don't think the stump top's really big enough for the backpack. I'm gonna spread out a little tarp here on the ground. We're gonna, I'm gonna unload it and show you what I kind of consider my normal backpacking loadout. Uh, we'll talk about the weight that I have in it now. We'll talk about the ideal weights, and we'll t and I'll tell you my little disaster story. So, without any more rambling, let's take it down to the old tarp top and let's uh, take a look at this pack. Okay, before I unload this, I'm going to show you what I, what it weighs right now with what I've got in it, and it's almost got everything in it. I would take backpacking. Maybe there's just a couple of other pounds worth of stuff, but let's just see now. We are at if you can see that about 18 pounds and six six or seven ounces. I can't really see it in the viewfinder there, but about 18, eight or something like that. And that again is with pretty much everything I would take on a regular weekend backpacking trip. Maybe another two or three pounds worth of stuff in here. We'll talk about that as I unload it. So anyway, I'm rambling. Let's take a look at this thing. So this is the Scandinavian gear backpack. And one thing you'll notice right off the bat is it's got a lot of straps on it. And, and they all pretty much have a function. So what I thought the simplest way to do this is just to go through the pack from top to bottom front to back and show you about the features. By the way, this pack is a $70 pack on, on Amazon right now. So well sub $100 pack, which I think is a pretty good price for a decent pack. And uh, I think this is a pretty good one for the money. So we'll take a look at it as we go. So let's just start with the back. First of all, it's got this uh, kind of a channel here to allow airflow through your back with these nice pads here. Pretty padded hip belt. Not a really stiff structure there, but, but very padded. You can adjust it very simply just by raising or lowering these tabs on the other, and it's got aluminum stays in it. So pretty good there, give you rigid support, but it's very adjustable. And basically, as you pull these things down, it just makes it for a shorter torso or longer torso. Not rocket size, it's a very simple adjustment, not a bunch of stuff to fiddle with. I kind of like that. It has the load lever straps on it, so you can you can cinch these shoulder straps up right here to level it up on your shoulders. And it's got a grab handle here to pick it up, which is pretty cool. If you look at the straps, um, it has a kind of a unique sliding channel, kind of a torso strap here. Just standard adjustable straps here. I do like the fact that it has some strap keepers here, so you don't have this thing flopping around. A hydration hose keeper here, it's elastic. And then it's got some reflective, um, reflective taping here and here which is pretty good if you have to hike on have to do any type hiking on the road or on the highway it's pretty good there so that's that's pretty much the back and the straps turn it over you got a just kind of a little tab here that you can lash stuff to and then on the bottom you got a rain cover and it's an integrated rain cover and you just basically just velcro open this thing up pull it out it's strapped on so it's fastened to the backpack. You won't lose it. I guess if you want to take it off, you can. And it just fits over over the backpack like so. We were at Chiha, Mount Chiha on the uh, Penhody Trail in Alabama. And it poured down rain on us all, all afternoon on Friday afternoon as we went out into the woods. And then um, I think we were wetter Saturday from the humidity from internal, internal sweating, but anyway it's got a nice rain cover does a good job of coverage on the back as you can see so i like the integrated rain cover 
It does add a little bit of weight, but the backpack itself is, is just under four pounds. So it's a pretty lightweight backpack. The waist strap has pockets on both sides. We got a, a rat's tourniquet in there just in case. And then it has also has kind of load level of straps for the waist belt to really make sure you can snug it up however you want to fit it. So pretty good adjustments there. I actually have a water bottle pocket on both sides. These are a little short. They're actually telling me they are redesigning the next production run. They're going to make these pockets a little bigger, but definitely it holds a uh, Nalgene bottle just fine. Compression straps on the side, on both sides. And you got compression straps here for the bottom compartment, which is also, you could, these are long enough, you could actually roll something up and just put a bedroll or something in there. A double zipper on the bottom, and you can see I've got my pillow and my Hennessy hammock in here. And then this has also got a, a zipper divider. If you want, if you want to have two separate compartments here, you can. You can just zip it closed. And if you want to have it open and have one big compartment, you can do that. If you got something longer you want to slide in, you can unzip it part of the way and slide it all the way down. And still have your divider here. I kind of like the separate compartment. Okay, another cool feature is it's got it doesn't have a whole lot of pockets on it, as you can see, but it does have one pretty good sized side pocket and basically um, zipper on the side here. And in there you got plenty of room. It's about probably 12, 14 inches tall. I've just got a first aid kit and a little kind of survival kit that I probably can't make myself leave at home. I usually I'm going to put like a, a lightweight full tang knife in here. I think I took the uh, Gerber Prodigy with me. I took it out for something. So that's going to add another half a pound or so to my 18 whatever. You got a top pack here. This top pack has a zipper here to go that you can access while it's, while it's closed. And in here I've got some cordage, uh, Sawyer mini water filter, a headlamp, and a pack of freeze-dried coffee so that's in there but that's it it's just one big pocket here there's not a lot a lot of extra pockets or or side pockets or hidden pockets or anything then you open the drawstring up and not only is there a, there's there's a uh, compression strap here to, to cinch this up but you got a big a big kind of a bucket pack here right so no pockets on the front or anything like that this another little loop here hanging loop on the front with a bungee cord on it, you can bungee cord stuff. It's an elastic bungee cord. It's also elastic bungee cords on the top pack. But what I like about this, not only is it a big bucket pack, but also if you go on the uh, this side, whichever side, I guess if you're wearing it, this will be on your left side. You can open the zipper up and you can access everything from the inside also, from the side without opening the top pack and without getting in. So that just gives you a little versatility in loading, unloading, and accessing your gear. Actually just got some clothing here extra socks and underwear, one meal, chicken teriyaki. I got my uh, pretty good size gas and the, uh, the Blaze stove kit, cook kit, my outdoor vitals. In this case, this is an Airy 20, kind of an under quilt to go with my hammock. And I've got kind of a ShamWow towel, which I'll use right now because the humidity is ridiculous here. So, and then on the outside, I've just got this little Enrit, whatever, pack towel, very, very lightweight, but that's everything in it. Let's check the weight now. I'm showing three pounds, 15 ounces. Under four pounds, which is pretty decent. It's, it doesn't probably fit the super ultralight category, but it also doesn't fit the uh, over $300 category like many of the super ultralight packs are. So for under four pounds and under 80 bucks or so, um, not a bad backpack in my opinion. Now, I, I wore this again backpacking in the rain, and we didn't do a long one because it was just a, just a early overnight and get up and hike back around to the car just kind of a, a shakedown hike basically to check our gear out but it did just fine it was very comfortable no, i said i was going to tell you a story but i was trying to focus on showing you this pack real quick so i can get to the story so let's let me just show you one more thing about this so the waist belt is is not fancy at all but it's functional i would have preferred if they were pull forward designs but honestly the 80 dollar pack they work just fine but as far as actual use I had no issues with it. It's a very comfortable backpack. The rain cover does a great job. I got to, I got to check that out. Got a whistle on the uh, sternum strap and like most of these, it wouldn't be my primary whistle, but it works just in case. It's much better than screaming your lungs out. Um, and here's that sliding kind of track I was telling you about. So it just kind of slides on this cordage. Looks like if you really, really tried, you might could pull it off. But honestly, it's got enough give here though with elastic, probably not gonna be a problem. But that's just a, a potential weak point that I saw. Um, but, it, but it's a pretty neat, very adjustable sliding system. Um, so there you go. If you're interested in one of these packs, there'll be a link probably right up here to, for Amazon. You can go and check it out. 
and um, purchase one. Again, they're under 80 bucks or so uh, at the time of this video. And again, if you do that, I'll get a little commission, which is going to help the channel out, and I would really appreciate it. But um, either way, I think for a sub four pound pack, this is a not a bad deal at all. That was just a quick look at the pack backpack. One thing I forgot, it does have a water bladder, a water bladder pocket with a, a, a hanging loop at the top which is velcroed so depending it really gives you a little more versatility with whatever type bladder you might have so not bad there so as far as pack weight goes let me just give you a, a very condensed as minimal rambling as possible about why it's such a big deal to me a couple years ago i took the boy scout troop we went to a hike uh, to blood mountain in georgia which is the highest point on the appalachian trail in georgia and it's just an overnight it's maybe about 12 13 miles i don't know from from Woody's Gap to Neil's Gap, I think, or vice versa. We wound up at the Wallachi Center, I think, which is actually the only place on the Appalachian Trail that the trail actually goes through a building. Really cool place if you ever get a chance to come check it out. I think it's up near near Cleveland or Blairsville, Georgia. But anyway, Blood Mountain, you can look at it. It's a really, really popular spot on, on the trail. So we started out hiking, and I it was cold that weekend. It was down in the 20s. So I was actually carrying my MSS sleep system, which weighs about 10 pounds already. Long story short, I had my pack at about 40 pounds. Now I weigh about 170 or so, so that is less than less than um that's right at 20 less than 25 percent of my weight, right body weight, which is, according to all the books and manuals that should be just great. Long story short, I was absolutely dragging, and we got up Saturday morning, had breakfast, hit the trail, and, and I was still so tired from Friday afternoon to Friday night. And my legs were so tired and that pack felt so stinking heavy that and to top it all off to add insult to injury we're about an hour into the trail and we met a couple of younger female hikers and they were bouncing along like they had not a care in the world and i'm dragging along like you know old man old man time and um just felt really bad to, to wrap this story up, we got to the bottom of Blood Mountain and it's got a lot of switchbacks. And, and I started to about the second switchback, my quads started cramping on me. And I'm freaking a little bit because I'm thinking, man, I, you know, I, I don't know what's gonna happen. My leg cramps up. I am literally gonna be stranded out here on the wrong side of the mountain from where the cars are. I don't know what I'm gonna do. I'm not gonna, and here I am the scoutmaster trying to look, you know, hey, I'm trying to set a good example. And I'm looking, feeling like an absolute sissy out here because I'm not, you know, can't even make it up the hill. My Eagle Scout son, Luke, swapped packs with me. His was probably 10 pounds lighter because maybe he's smarter than me. <laughs> and um, it was like you had taken the world off my shoulders and I actually made it. I was still tired, it was still hard, but that extra 10 pounds made a tremendous difference. And he carried, of course, my 40 pound pack like it was made out of feathers. So that's another story. But point being that, man, weight is so important. And so what is the uh, perfect weight? And I think this applies, by the way, to whether you're going backpacking or whether you're building a bug out bag or anything else. I mean, I've actually heard that the maximum weight you should carry is 40% of your, of your body weight. Okay, so if I weigh 160, then 40% is going to be 32, it's going to be 64 pounds. Man, I'm telling you what, if I put 64 pounds on my back and try to hike to the mailbox, I'm going to be tired. I'm just being straight with you. I think when it comes to backpack weight, the number one question is, is how much can you comfortably carry? Don't worry about body weight percentage. Don't worry about any of that. You need to figure out what, what you're going to be comfortable carrying, and you can't figure that out on paper. you got to put a backpack on your back, put some weight in it, weigh it, and go for a walk. See how well you handle it. In, in my opinion, one of the best ways to do that is to uh, just buy yourself a scale like this one. It is a H110 plus. I may even put a link to this, Amazon link to this uh, uh, below. I haven't done that yet, but it's just, I mean, it's like a 10 or $15 scale. Then get yourself some water bottles uh, or water bladder or whatever and figure out what 40% of your body weight is and weigh it. Fill them up with water until you got that. Strap it on and go for a walk. Just go for a walk in your neighborhood. See how far you can walk with 40% of your body weight and how, how comfortable it is. If you make it fine and you can walk all, you know, all over the place and you're doing fine, you walk for 15, 20, 30 minutes or an hour and you're all good, then um, go somewhere on a trail that's got some ups and downs, do the same thing. If you can do that with 40% of your body weight, then you're good. Maybe go for more. But I'm going to guess that probably it's going to feel really, really heavy. So what's cool about using the water is just pour some of it out until you get to a, a different weight and then try that. Find out what your ideal weight is that you can comfortably carry on a over a long distance over vary varying terrain. 
then the next step would be to figure out exactly what you need to have what you must have with you when you're, when you're going backpacking or camping. And that's gonna vary depending upon where you're going, how long you're going for, and what, what the climate is or what the weather is. You just know that it's in colder weather, you're gonna to have to carry more gear and clothes and everything else weighs, right? That's just the way it is. Put it in the pack that you're gonna use and weigh it. Um, and, and basically what you wanna do, first of all, is figure out your base weight. Your base weight is basically gonna be your backpack, your sleeping bag, and your tent or whatever so that that's the bottom line you know you got to have that stuff right then start figuring out what else you need and what you can eliminate you know you're gonna need some food you're gonna need some water you may need some clothes I think you're gonna need a first aid kit knife whatever else other other items you might need and see what your weight is if your minimum amount of gear that you have to carry is more than the maximum weight you can comfortably carry based on your prior experimentation, then you're gonna make some adjustments. So you can do that by practicing and getting stronger and, and, and just building up your weight by exercising with a pack on, going hiking, put some weight in it. The second thing you can do is start figuring out how either you can eliminate some of the excess gear or you can get lighter weight gear. Now, I'll be honest with you, I found there's an inverse relationship between the weight of gear and the price of gear. In other words, the lighter it weighs, the more it costs, generally. And that's just, that's just the way it is. You can easily, very easily drop $1,000 on your base kit if you want to. And you don't have to. There, there's some options. We've seen some on the channel that can help you save some money. Uh, this could be one. This is under four pounds for a backpack for under 100 bucks. It just depends on what you want to do. So anyway, that's probably a very rambling way of, of trying to point out that, at least from my way of thinking, the whole question of how much should a pack weigh is a as little as possible and still contain what you need to make sure that you can you can be comfortable and safe when you're out in the woods and b it really depends on you it depends on your fitness level the uh, comfort level of the backpack that you're wearing because some backpacks are going to carry weight a lot better than others this one did okay i had about 25 30 pounds on this one and it did just fine for me, I was probably at 20 to 25 percent of my body weight, which is my goal. My goal when I'm backpacking, at least if I'm not going over two or three days, is 25 to 30 pounds because I know I can carry that comfortably and I'm not going to be miserable. Okay, if you're going on a, a very extended backpacking trip, you're going to have to add more food at a minimum, just more food and probably some more fuel. So, anyway, if you know me, you know I'm going to ramble probably way more than I should, but bottom line, your pack should weigh as little as possible while containing the gear that you need to be safe and comfortable as much as possible in the woods and the best way to find that out is through your own personal experimentation and the, again the simplest way to find that out is is load up some water in a backpack weigh it and take off start heavy and you can always take the water away so there you go i hope this has been helpful again if you're looking for a backpack that's under four pounds that's under under 80 bucks at the time of this video you might check out the scandinavian gear backpack because it is a pretty good deal in my opinion for the money is it perfect no it's not perfect i like there's a couple of things I, that i think could probably be improved on it but for about 80 bucks or so this is a rock and roll deal in my opinion so anyway i hope this has been helpful once again thanks to the folks at scandinavian gear for sending me this so i can show it to you and for working out a partnership deal with me on this backpack and as always thank you for watching survival on purpose put out a brand new video every friday and saturday and very often random videos throughout the week you can check out a new one by clicking it right here if you're not subscribed please click down in the corner right there and click that little button and subscribe i would really appreciate it once again my name's brian you're watching survival on purpose remember survival's not an accident so be prepared i'll see you next time